in these times of uncertainty when what I can say is we don't know what's going to happen. So it gives us some stability to face all of this unknown. So I would like to start by with mindfulness. And there's a definition of mindfulness that I like to introduce, and it's this. Mindfulness is the awareness that arises by paying attention on purpose in this present moment without judgment. And sometimes I like to add for the greater service of self-understanding and wisdom. So mindfulness is our own awareness that arises by paying attention on purpose in this present moment and without judgment. So John Kabat-Zinn is the one that created this definition that I share with everyone. He is a doctor and a scientist, and he created a program called MBSR about 30 years ago. And because he's a doctor and a scientist, he's been able to study the brains of people who meditate. And now we have so much research and proven information on how mindfulness and meditation actually shifts the chemistry of our brain and starts to help us become more focused. So the definition, the awareness that arises. This is an awareness of when we're spaced out, when we're not paying attention. In the present moment is right here, right now, where our physical bodies can only be. Paying attention on purpose is that opposite of being on autopilot. It's been proven that we as humans have about 80,000 thoughts a day. That's about 55 different thoughts every single minute. And there was a study that was published in Microsoft Corp that said, it's now been proven that a goldfish has a longer attention span than humans. A goldfish can hold its attention for about nine seconds, but we humans really lose our concentration after about eight seconds. And that's a lot to do with, you know, just the digital society that we're living in and our type A personalities where we want to just get things done and our sense that we need to multitask. But it's really been proven that multitasking really doesn't work. So the awareness that arises by paying attention on purpose in this moment, our physical bodies can only be in this moment, even though our minds are constantly thinking into the future, planning, worrying, and into the past by remembering, wishing things would be different, wishing things would be the same. And then the big one really is without judgment. It's very rare that we have a thought where we're not having an opinion about it, liking something, disliking it, agreeing with it, disagreeing with it, judging ourselves, judging others. So the practice of mindfulness, mindfulness is something that we all naturally possess. We all were born with it, yet we lose track of being mindful because we are so busy being in the, on that autopilot where that internal chatter in our minds, those 80,000 thoughts, they seem normal. And it's not until we practice mindfulness through the practice of meditation can we start to sort through those thoughts and acknowledge the times of day throughout our entire day when we are distracted. I'm sure that you have all experienced being in a car driving somewhere or being on the train and all of a sudden you get to your destination but you can't remember getting there. Or even having a conversation with someone in person on the phone walking away and you don't really remember anything they talked about because you were too busy talking to yourself in your own mind. And even right now, when I'm presenting this and we're all listening, we all have a chatter going on. So there's a practice to this mindfulness. There's a practice to paying attention on purpose so that we can recognize the times that we've drifted off, the times that we aren't present. And everything that is happening is happening in the present moment. Everything that's happening in our mind isn't really happening. Is what our mind is telling us about what is happening, its opinion of what is happening, what we think might happen, or remembering how something used to be or wishing it could be a certain way. So it's not until we practice this through meditation that we can start to 
create an awareness around mindfulness in everyday life. So awareness is a really big thing and it's, it's a little bit different than the practice of mindfulness. Awareness is what signals us, taps us on the shoulder and says, hey, you're not paying attention. Hey, you're spaced out. Come back to the present moment. And we all also have this awareness, but unless we practice strengthening it, our awareness isn't that strong because we are used to being in that chatter and that chatter feels comfortable to us. So I'd love to know how many people meditate on a regular basis. And I can't really see the whole square, but maybe I can change this and I've got it. All right, so you can raise your real hand if you meditate on a regular basis and great. And then what about if you've meditated before, even for five minutes? Awesome. And what about if you've never ever meditated and you have no idea what it is? Okay. How do you pronounce your name? Do, do, do. Dogu. 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 Welcome. I love beginners. Okay. So meditation is not at all about trying to stop our thinking. We cannot stop our thinking any more than we can stop our eyes from seeing something and our ears from hearing. So it's not at all about stopping those 80,000 thoughts that we have in a day. Instead, it's the practice of single pointed concentration where we shift our full attention to something other than what is constantly going on in our own mind our inner critic. And by the way, when we think about what goes on in our mind, a lot of the time it's not very kind to ourselves, let alone others, but to ourselves as well. So it's bringing also in an awareness of practicing kindness and compassion first towards ourselves so that we are able to practice kindness and compassion towards others. So meditation isn't at all about stopping the thinking and we will get into a meditation shortly. So one of the most common focuses of a meditation is our breath, simply because our breath is something that's always with us. We always have access to our breath. And also our physical body is present in this moment, but so is our breath. And it's not just all of our breath, it's this breath. Because the breath that we've already all taken, not present anymore. The breath that we've yet to take, not present there either. So it's bringing us to this very, very moment of feeling our physical body in this moment and allowing our mind to settle down a bit. In a way, it's allowing our mind to synchronize with our body, which is right here. We also don't often acknowledge our body being in one place. We are constantly on the run from one meeting to the next, whether we are on Zoom meetings or when we used to go to real meetings, we never often sat down and said, I am in this meeting, this is where I am right here, right now, and I know this is what I'm doing. We're already one step ahead. So this practice of mindfulness and meditation in the way that it can increase our focus is all about being right here, right now, and without any judgment because our minds are going to think. So as we get into our first meditation, the instructions are going to be really simple. I'm going to ask us to get grounded in our body and I'll guide us through that. And then I'll ask us to place our full attention on our breath, just the sensations of breathing in and breathing out. The second set of instructions are this, the moment that you realize that your mind has gone back onto autopilot, that your mind is thinking, judging, having opinions, you simply acknowledge it, you let it go, and you come right back to the breath. And you'll notice that this will happen many, many times. You'll also be surprised at where your mind takes you. And you'll be surprised at the amount of judging and opinions we want to have about our thinking and about our coming back to the breath. So. Um, the other thing that I like to say about meditation in contrast to teaching a yoga class, if we were here to have a yoga class tonight, I could, I could probably see most of you and see what your poses look like. But in a meditation, I have no idea what is going on in your own minds. 
So the best and most important thing is to be genuinely honest with what's happening in your own mind. There is some science behind this um, study of why meditation is so helpful and why it helps us focus. So there's a part of our brain, the back of our brain called the amygdala. It was the first part of our brain to develop. And as a matter of fact, it was fully developed when we were born. It's the amygdala, but it's also known as our primitive brain or our reptilian brain. So in the primitive times, when we were at risk of being attacked by a predator, our amygdala would light up and trigger our sympathetic nervous system response so that our heart rate become fast, our breath short and shallow, or maybe we're holding our breath. Maybe we notice our palms get sweaty. Anyway, we're on high alert. And back then, our amygdala probably saved us from being attacked. But these days, the amygdala doesn't know the difference between the stresses of a predator and the stresses of the emails, the 10 emails we have to get out. The amygdala doesn't know the difference between real stress and our to-do list. Fortunately, we have another part of our brain called the prefrontal cortex. It's the front part of our brain, and it started to, to develop when we were around two years old. And it continues to develop until we're about 27. So this prefrontal cortex is also known as our executive thinking part of our brain. And it's in this part of our brain that, that acts from, reacts from our parasympathetic nervous system, our nervous system of more calm, of more peace. It's the nervous system and the part of our brain that's responsible for our focus, responsible for our clarity. This part of our brain is responsible for our creativity and our inspiration. This part of our brain is responsible for regulating our emotions. It's responsible for allowing us to take a pause, to respond wisely, as opposed to just reacting. And a lot of this reactive thinking is out loud in our actions, but a lot of this goes on constantly in our own mind, this constant reactive thinking. And this is what takes us into our fight or flight, back into the amygdala. And we could consider that the amygdala is a bit like a two-year-old child because it really isn't developed past that. It's just on high alert. And when the amygdala doesn't get what it wants, our amygdala starts screaming. So by practicing meditation, by placing our attention on something other than our constant thinking, we start to create and open new pathways in our brain so that when we are triggered by a stressful situation, through this practice of mindfulness and meditation and through these new pathways, we are directed more to our parasympathetic nervous system. In our prefrontal cortex, we all have gray matter. We also have it in the amygdala. But what's been known now through research is that the gray matter in our prefrontal cortex starts to shrink with age, just like our muscles start to atrophy and other things that happen as we age. And fascinating, when we practice mindfulness through meditation, that gray matter starts to grow again. And so you could consider that by practicing mindfulness and meditation, it's like taking our brain to the gym. And when we sit in meditation and we place our attention on our breath, but then our mind wanders and our awareness notifies that we've wandered, bicep curl, boom, back to the breath. We, our mind wanders again. We acknowledge it. We notice it. Boom, bicep curl again. So with all of this working out of the prefrontal cortex, the amygdala isn't getting as much attention and it starts to soften. Now, we still have our amygdala for when we are in danger. We need to know that we shouldn't step off the curb and get run over by a bus, but it also doesn't trigger our stress responses by going through daily stresses. And by the way, what our mind is telling us that's happening, our body doesn't know the difference between what is actually happening and what our mind is telling us that's happening. So some of us are on high alert and in stress mode much of our waking hours. So 
I'm going to get us started in a meditation and I welcome questions of any kind, especially after this meditation. After this meditation, we'll have a chat about it, find out if there are any questions, maybe share a little bit about your experience. And then I'll take us into some emergency tools and techniques to create more focus and to step out of that high stress zone. So before we start, do you have any questions? You can type it right into the chat box. Okay, I suggest now that you find a comfortable place to sit if you haven't already. And you can sit in a chair or on the sofa with your feet firmly planted on the floor. You can also sit on a cushion on the floor like I'm doing with your legs loosely crossed in front. And sometimes it's uncomfortable to stand. So if any, uncomfortable to sit. So if any of you want to stand, that's fine too. And I recommend that you take a position that's somewhat dignified. We don't often sit in an upright, still position. We're used to just lounging back. So even sitting like this for just a few moments, you might feel a little uncomfortable. So if at any moment you start to feel uncomfortable, it's okay to shift your position. Just mindfully do that. So before we begin, let's clear out some energy and sort of somewhat energetically get on the same page. So take a, a really deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale. <sighs> take a deeper breath in. Exhale. <sighs> and once more, take a really deep breath in. <sighs> I invite you to find a placement for your hands, whether it's palms face down on your thighs, palms up on your thighs, or hands folded in your lap. And now when you're ready, I invite you to close your eyes. And just take a moment to start to feel your body land right here, right now. Notice how the seat that you're in is supporting you. And we're just letting the seat support us, letting gravity do its thing. Feel your feet firmly planted on the floor or loosely crossed in front. And just to bring your full attention I'm going to guide us from body part to body part. You may feel sensations, but the main purpose is just to begin gently guiding our attention from one focal point to the next. So we'll start by placing your full attention on the soles of your feet, whether you're barefooted in socks or shoes, notice any sensations on the soles of your feet. And then bring your attention to the tops of your feet and all of your toes. You could even wiggle your toes if you want. And then bringing your attention now to your inner and outer ankles. Then with your mind, with your attention, slowly tracing up your calves and your shins, circling around your knees to the crease behind your knees. Pull your attention up the front of your thigh and the back of your thigh, pausing for a moment to notice the strong muscles of our legs. Notice if there's any tension there. And again, no judgment, just noticing in a detached way. Bring your attention to your glutes and your hips. And now from the soles of our feet to our hips, Imagine this is our base, our foundation. And imagine this base is as strong as the base of a mountain or perhaps rooted down by the strongest, deepest roots of a big oak tree. So that we are committed and we are supported in our choice to sit right here, right now. Then from this grounded base of our seat, Bring your attention 
from the very base of your tailbone, rising upward through your entire spine, perhaps sitting just a bit taller. And in this length of our spine, imagine a spaciousness, a vast amount of space, a space that is a container big enough to hold all of our emotions and thoughts without getting stuck on any of them. Bring your attention to your shoulders, relax any tension that you just might now feel in your shoulder, shoulders. You can even move your head a bit side to side, any tension in your neck, and perhaps even rolling your shoulders up and back a few times just to notice and then release. From your shoulders, move your attention down your upper arms, your elbows, your lower arms, and into your hands, noticing how our hands help to support this posture of stillness. Now bring your attention to any tension across your forehead, between your brows, smooth it out, soften your eyelids, relax all of the muscles around and behind your eyes, relax your cheeks, relax and lengthen your jaw, soften your lips. And visualize this entire posture as mindfulness of body as a whole, just visualizing our own human existence right here. And now because in this meditation, we aren't trying to shut out or shut off anything, we invite everything in as we sit so that we can become more familiar with the patterns of our thinking and our distractions, we now open all of our senses. So starting with the sense of hearing, listening to the sound of my voice, any sounds that may be present in the room you're in, in the space you're in, and then without straining, just noticing any sounds in the distant. Just allowing all sounds to be a part of this experience as opposed to an obstacle. Our sense of touch, notice whatever part of our body is making contact with the chair, the sofa, the cushion, the floor, and acknowledge that. Notice the texture of our clothing as it touches our skin. And then even the slight sensation of air on our bare skin. Be open to our sense of taste and smell and even our taste of sense of sight behind our closed eyes. Shapes, colors, visions. We let it all be as it is. And now take a deeper breath in through your nose and then a very gentle, long exhale out your nose. Allow your breath to regulate to your normal rhythm of breathing. And just place your attention on what that feels like. And then beginning to notice where we feel the breath the most. Bring your attention to that slight exchange of air in and out of your nostrils. Noticing the air as it moves in a bit cooler as it goes out. Moving our attention now to the center of our chest and just noticing that slight rise and fall of our chest as we take each breath in and let each breath out. And now moving down to your belly, noticing a slight expansion of the belly as we inhale and a contraction as we exhale. 
then gradually allow your attention to land on where you feel it the most in your body. And without forcing the breath in or out, just allow the best as you can to ride the waves of your own breath in and breath out. Just the sensations of breathing in and breathing out. And just the full embracing of each breath, every breath, gently, lightly, with mindfulness. I'm breathing in and I know I'm breathing in. I'm breathing out and I know I'm breathing out. Just the full unfolding of an in-breath and the falling away of the out-breath. And at some point you will notice if you haven't already that your mind has a life of its own. Our mind gets bored staying with the breath. Our mind wants to think. So the second part of the instructions are to notice when your mind has wandered without applying any opinion or judgment, just acknowledge where your mind has taken you. Let that thought or emotion go, then gently yet firmly guide your full attention back to the breath. This breath in, this breath out. Holding our attention here, resting our attention here, the embracing of each breath, moment to moment, breath to breath. And whether it's a sound, a sensation, or a thought that pulls us away, it's not a problem. We come back to the practice. We acknowledge, bicep curl for the brain. We come back and we begin again, fully embracing the entirety of a breath in and then following that breath out all the way until we're empty. And then noticing the next breath as it automatically comes in. And even though the instructions are simple, they're not easy to keep placing our full attention on just one cycle of the breath at a time. We notice that we quickly get hijacked. We get absorbed in some other kind of mental activity, just noticing, coming back to the breath. Noticing, coming back to the breath. And then it becomes not the breath that's of primary importance. It becomes the noticing. The noticing when we've drifted, our awareness that notifies us and the willingness to practice single pointed concentration for the benefit of strengthening our focus and our clarity. And just noticing the various endless scenarios and stories that play out in our mind. Maybe it's anticipating or worrying about the future, planning, what's for dinner, 
What am I going to do after this? How will I make it through another week at home? All of those random thoughts that our mind gets stuck on. Perhaps we're arguing with ourselves whether we're doing this right or not. Maybe we're bored. It's what the mind does. And mindfulness is not at all about controlling any of these thoughts. It's noticing. And through the practice of awareness, we're strengthening our ability to notice when we've drifted and refocus. Notice when we've drifted and refocus. Breath by breath, moment by moment. Holding our awareness in this present moment, paying attention on purpose in this moment without judgment. And now when you hear the sound of a bell, just allow this vibrational sound to be felt within. And when you can no longer feel it or hear it, that's your signal that you can drop this formal meditation. Okay, we did it. That was a little over 15 minutes that we sat in our meditation. And I'd love to hear some comments or questions. So you can either type in the box or unmute yourself to ask the question or to let us know about your experience. Did anyone notice that your mind was wandering? Mm. Yeah. Those 80,000 thoughts, they pop up. It's amazing how many times we have to refocus, right? And thank you, Karen. And we don't know this until we sit with our minds. We have no idea we're thinking so much because it seems normal to us to be thinking so much. I feel like this would be a great way to help me fall asleep. I have something else for you coming up about falling asleep, Peter. Where's Peter? And I have a lot of trouble in the evenings and that's when our mind is twitch twitchy. Yeah, we have a little extra time to think and our mind does get twitchy. How can we do this every day from Holly? Thank you for that question. It's practice. And Randy asks, does the mind stop racing with practice? What I have to say about that is we get a little bit better about focusing. It's a practice and we get better about focusing. And what I experience is that my mind isn't hasn't stopped racing, but instead I'm able to focus it on my breath more. So if you can imagine that my breath is in center stage and I s still notice all of these thoughts that are around me, yet I'm not so quickly pulled away by them. How can we do this every day? I suggest setting a time 
And if you're not used to meditating, I would say baby steps, five minutes. Set a specific time every day. Find a specific place that you're going to sit. Set a timer and either use an app or place your full attention on your breath. I'm also happy to share with Joe a recorded five minute meditation of mine so that you can sit with it. But many people ask this question, is it better to sit for a half hour or longer one day or little bits every day? The answer to that question is it's better to consistently meditate five minutes a day or longer rather than be sporadic about it. Because we know what it's like when we go to the gym. If we, if we go to the gym once a week, it doesn't do as much good as if we go two or three times a week. Yes. So I created a series called 14 Days of Meditation. I created it in February. And quite ironically, it came out on March 16th, the day that we all went into isolation. So the content of my, medita my meditation series doesn't exactly apply to what we were all going through. However, it does really apply. So what it involves is an email that you'll receive in your inbox from me every single morning. And in this email, I'll have a theme of the day, a mindful tip of the day, and a guided five minute meditation. And the second week we move up to 10 minutes of meditation. So I'm happy to share that content with Joe and he can share it with anyone that's interested. And Holly, does that answer your question about beginning? How to begin? You can unmute. Yeah. If you need gui guidance, there are other platforms. Um, are there other platforms? I'll also share some of these platforms with Joe so that he can share them with you. There's many, many apps out now. And I have to say guidance is helpful in the beginning. It really is because our minds, it's hard to sit with our minds when we're not used to it. Are there any benefits of morning versus evening meditation or the other way around? The answer to that question is what works for you? Which, what time of the day can you find the most consistency? I prefer morning. I like the way it feels to start my day. But some people, mm, not working in the morning, maybe a midday meditation or an evening meditation will work. The only thing about an evening meditation is it's not such a great idea to lie down and do an evening meditation and let that be your core meditation because you probably will fall asleep if you're tired. So I suggest creating a meditation during a time that you can be alert, awake and aware to what is actually happening. What about music with meditation? I don't meditate to music because I feel that there's more clarity in just the mundane, place my attention on the breath, when my mind drifts, come back to it. But it might be helpful to some people to have background music. Do you have to be still or can you meditate while moving? That's a great question. We get asked that a lot. So running, swimming, Biking, practicing yoga are, are, are all forms of meditation in motion. However, they don't take the place of an actual meditation practice. Now, there are four postures, four official postures to meditation, sitting, standing, lying down is a posture. And it's, it's primarily used for if someone is sick or if you really want to do a sleep meditation. And then the fourth posture is walking. There's a very specific way to walk, to meditate. And basically the way it works is as we, in our seated meditation today, placed our full attention on our breath. When our mind wandered, we came back to the breath. The way it works in walking meditation is you pay, place your attention on the striking of your feet to the, to the ground, right foot, left foot. I'm thinking about dinner. Oh yeah right foot, left foot, what's happening now? Oh yeah, walking. So every time our mind wanders, we come back to the sensation of walking. Yes, great question too. It's really a great idea to keep a journal near you when you meditate because we often have brilliant, creative, inspirational thoughts that come to us while we meditate. 
I suggest not interrupting your meditation to write them down, but right when you come out of the meditation, reflect on some of the thoughts that you had. These thoughts are within us, so chances are you will remember them again. <clears throat> New York can be a very loud place. How do you keep the, the noise out? Well, life is chaotic, life is noise, and it's, it's helpful to find a place that's particularly quiet, but there's constant noise. We can't stop the sirens that are constant outside our windows today. We can't stop construction. And it also helps us to better deal with the chaos and the distractions of our day-to-day -day life when we're trying to think and we're trying to solve problems and we're trying to focus. There's static constantly. So the practice of meditation is placing our full attention on something other than the thoughts or sounds that pull us away. Yet, we let everything be as it is. We don't try to shut out anything. Yes, so that's a great question, Karen, and I, I'm prepared for that one. So I have three techniques to <sighs> just release some stress. Perhaps when we're in the middle of a Zoom meeting and someone's driving us crazy or the meeting's driving us crazy or any other time during the day when we are frustrated. I am, have been working with a lot of families on meditation when <clears throat> many parents are so frustrated and screaming at their kids because they're trying to homeschool them and work at the same time. So I've got three techniques that I'd love to share with you that we can try if you're interested. The first one is really simple. Um... And, you know, in Zoom, we're often muted, so it might be easy to do this in Zoom. The first one is so simple. It's just realizing when we feel irritated, stressed, frustrated, and we just take three really deep breaths in, just like we did in the beginning. Let's just do it again. Pretend like you're in a meeting or you just need a teeny tiny break. You can also try getting away from your desk, doing this and coming back, but you bring some presence to your physical body. You acknowledge your physical body. And then you simply take a deep breath in. A long breath out. Take a deep breath in. Know that you're breathing in. Exhale completely until you're empty. And then once more, take a deep breath in. Exhale. It helps. This is also a great technique to follow every time you get out of your chair. Maybe make, make a sticky note every time you sit back down to do that. There is another method that I'd like to try with all of us called the 478 method. There's no magic about these particular numbers. This is just what I picked to use today. And this calms down and relaxes us into our parasympathetic nervous system. It allows us to get more oxygen into the body and it brings us more into a state of calm. So it's four, seven, eight, and basically we're going to breathe in for the count of four, hold our breath for seven, exhale for eight. So take a meditational seat once again. You can choose to close your eyes or you could keep them keep them open and I'll guide us through this briefly. So take a full and deep breath in for the count of four, three, two, one, hold for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, use all the count, three, two, one, inhale, four, three, two, one, hold, seven, Exhale, eight, seven, six, five, <clears throat> four, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Hold, seven. Exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And again, four. Three, two, one, hold seven. 
Exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Finish by taking a deep breath in. Open your mouth, exhale. And we could do this up to, you could set a timer, you could do this up to three to five minutes and you will be amazed how much more calm you feel. The other technique is called box breathing. And again, it can be any counting that works. And one of the ways that this technique is so effective is it really takes a lot of focus on our breath and measuring it out. So you can think of a box, inhale for five, hold for five, exhale for five, hold for five. All right, I'm gonna try it. Take a deep breath in to start. Open your mouth, exhale. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Hold, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two. Hold, empty, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five. Hold five, exhale five, hold empty five, inhale five, four, three, two, one, hold five, exhale five. Hold again, five. Inhale, five. Hold, five. Exhale, five. Hold, five. Try it on your own for two rounds. And when you finish your two rounds, finish it by taking a deep breath in and a long breath out. The box breathing is really good for concentration and it also gives us time and space to calm down if we feel that we would tend to be reactive in a situation. It's best if we can walk away and do this breathing, but sometimes you might be on a Zoom call and you might have to do just what we did together without anybody really knowing because you really can't tell and you can do it with your eyes open. You can even do this with your eyes open face-to-face -face in a conversation with someone. Any other questions? That's a great question about the exhalation. In the box breathing, it can be all in and out of your nose. In the three breaths in and out, out your mouth for sure. And actually to make a sound when you exhale on those three breaths in and out is even more helpful to release actual stress, clear energy out. The four, seven, eight, either way, I always think breathing out your mouth can be helpful to release some tension and some stress. Don't ever underestimate the power of our breath, especially our exhale. It's our most important tool to reduce stress. Um, I'm not sure about the question from Holly.
Do you want to unmute? Hi. Hi, Holly. Hi there. I just wondered because everything you say makes so much sense. And as someone that's not used to meditation or mindfulness at all, how do you get from being slightly cynical to being so, you know, you're so good at what you do. So how do you, how do you sort of make that change? How do you come with yourself? Thank you for asking that. And thank you for saying that a lot of practice. So it looks like this is easy for me, but meditation isn't really easy, but I like the way I feel and I'm committed to my practice of meditation. And the more we practice this on our own, the more we practice a daily meditation, the more this mindfulness that we all naturally possess, the more it starts to show up in our day-to-day -day life. And I think the best way to incorporate it, Holly, is to when you start to feel that stress coming in, just remind yourself, deep breaths in, three, deep breaths in, long breaths out and see if you can create a daily five-minute meditation practice. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking that. Any more questions? I'm going to type in my website. And feel free to contact me. I also have online Zoom classes for yoga and some meditation. And I also am available by Zoom to do some family meditations, which I find really helpful and gratifying to um, work with families with kids, just to ask these kids, what, what's your biggest stress? And maybe it's something that the parents as parents, never think to ask them. And it's been quite surprising what they say. And then giving them the tools to work with breath and meditation to be a little bit more grounded. And I think I'll leave you with um, a couple of mantras of mine. When we're feeling anxious, stressed, you know, when we just can't take any more of the news when we hear about people we know who are sick or just the stress of it all. It's really, really helpful to just get grounded and take those breaths in and out. And then as you breathe in and as you breathe out, ask yourself, am I okay in this minute? In this moment, am I okay? And most of the time we can say yes. Then we can make it to the next breath. And am I okay in this breath? And it just gives us a sense of peace. It starts to build resilience. Our breath is, is such a great tool and reminder of our own natural resilience. Because we take the breath in. We fill up completely. Then we exhale all the way until we're empty. And then our breath is so resilient, it automatically bounces back to the next breath in. We don't even have to try. And we can learn a lot from that buoyancy of our breath in. So the third is in all of the uncertainty, when, when is the country going to open? When is this gonna happen? When are we going to be able to do this? The best answer, I don't know. And just be okay with not knowing because we don't have control over this. We don't have control over any of it. So the best answer is, I don't know. I've been meditating for years. I appreciate what you shared today is it is so important to meditate every day. It affects your health, your well-being in a positive way, and it starts to happen in a short amount of time. Thank you so much for sharing that. And one of the most important things that meditation does that we all are concerned with right now, it boosts our immune system. It really does. And one of the ways it does that is by continually taking us out of our fight or flight that sympathetic nervous system that has us on high alert. And also just starting to notice sensations in our body when we are on high alert. We are often in such a hurry 
to just get things done, that we disregard these sensations in our body of tension or tightness. When we are on high alert, our body contracts, our mind contracts. And all of that contracting builds up toxins that we don't want, that we don't need. And just a reminder, there's one more tip that I'd love to share with you that has helped me so much during this time. And it's creating structure. We all have a different way of being right now and having a structure for your day. And if not your full day, have a structure for the first hour of your day. Write out a detailed structure. And then when we're feeling off balance, we have that structure or just loosely make blocks of time for your day so that you know in this time you are going to take a break. Maybe step outside, nourish yourself, take those three breaths in and out. And I look at my, my schedule structure many times during the day just to give me stability. And by the way, your meditation seat is structure. And all structure creates and reinforces resilience. And just like we all naturally possess mindfulness, we all naturally possess resilience. All right. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you so much. And I like to end my meditation sessions with giving some metta. Metta is a practice of loving kindness that's 2,600 years old. And I like to acknowledge each and every one that is suffering from this virus, each and every one that's on the front line taking care of those who are sick, and each and every one that is doing something to help us stay healthy with food and comfortable. So let's take our seat one more time and bring to mind someone that you know that fits into that category or imagine everyone in general. And then I'd like to ask you to invite in everyone on this call and yourself. And you can say these blessings out loud, or you can say them silently to yourself, but there's power in them. So visualize everyone, someone, and to everyone we say, may we all be happy. May we all be safe. May we all be healthy. May we all live our days with ease. And may we all always feel loved. And may we all always feel loved. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to be here with all of you. Thank you, Terry.